J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Abe Lyman and his orchestra coming to you from Radio City, New York. The orchestra opens the program with I Double Dare You. There's a change in the Jell-O program tonight. It comes to you from New York instead of Hollywood. But there's no change in Jell-O with its six delicious flavors. Jell-O is always good wherever you have it, New York or Hollywood, north or south, at home or in a restaurant. You can count on Jell-O to be tops in goodness every time. For Jell-O brings you that special extra rich fruit flavor. A flavor as delicious as the fresh ripe fruit itself. That's why Jell-O six flavors are tempting and refreshing. All six colors are bright and gay. Just be sure to get genuine Jell-O when you buy. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. I double dare you, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who traveled all the way from California to New York. That gypsy of the airwaves, Jack Benny. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, your little nomad talking. And Harry Von Zell, I want to tell you right now how much I appreciate your helping me out tonight. It's a grand gesture. Oh, well, don't really. mention it, Jack. I only hope I'll be able to fill Don Wilson's shoes. What was that? I said, uh, I hope I can fill Don Wilson's shoes. Oh, you can, Harry, you can. But don't ever get into his pants without a compass. You, know? <laughs> you should see that guy. Oh, huh? bet. Well, tell me, Jack, what kind of a trip did you have to New York? Did you, did you fly in? Uh, no, Harry, I took one of those new streamlined trains. And believe me, they are classy. I mean, they're the last word in luxury. Yes, I, oh, I heard that. They, they tell me the service is marvelous. Oh, it is, although I think they overdo it a little bit. Oh, they do? Yeah, I didn't mind when the conductor sent me gardenias. <laughs> but when the porter tucked me in my berth and sang rock a Baby, I thought that was going too far, you know? And the candy vendor, was he ritzy? He was ritzy, huh? Yeah, you should have heard him. He walked up and down the aisle yelling candy, peanuts, popcorn, and annuities. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Harry, it is positive. Hmm? See, it rings just like it does in Hollywood, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, pardon me a minute. Hello? Who? No, I'm sorry, miss. Phil Harris didn't come to New York with me. What? No, I can't run home and get him. Goodbye. That's all I've heard from every girl in town. Phil Harris, is he here? Where is he? Anyway, it looks like we ought to have a lot of fun, though, tonight, Harry. I don't know whether you know it or not, but your boss, Fred Allen, is coming up here. He is? Yeah. Well, that's funny. He told me he was going to an egg roll. Egg roll. Well, maybe that's what he thinks this is. I Hiya, Jack, old boy. Welcome to New York. Oh, hello, Lyman. How are you? <laughs> Little Bo Peep is here again. <laughs> <laughs> With us. Oh, well. Uh, hey, Jack, I want to thank you very much for letting me be on your program tonight. It was doggone sweet of you. Yes, it was. It was. Please try and act like a gentleman tonight, not a gorilla. Don't worry, Jack. I made up my mind to behave myself. I'm a changed guy. Well, that suits me, Abe. I'm glad to hear it. Here, Believe Jack, me. To show you my heart's in the right place, I brought you a bouquet of flowers. Flowers? Hey, wait a minute, Jack. Drop that bouquet. Why, what's wrong here? I saw Abe put a tarantula in that. A tarantula? Yeah. Why, those things are deadly. Abe Lyman, that's positively the worst thing I've ever heard of. Well, gee, I only did it for a laugh. A laugh, what a sense of humor. You're the kind of a guy who would give your grandmother a hot foot. I do, and she loves it. <laughs> you and your practical jokes. Say, Harry, you know what Lyman did to me last summer in Hollywood? What? I was nice enough to invite him to my house for the weekend, and he put a shark in my swimming pool. He did? Yeah, I thought it was a rubber one until I started missing toes. <laughs> How do you like that for a trick? <laughs> that was one of my best gags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, look, Abe, just attend to your music tonight and keep away from me, will you? Uh, come in. Oh, how do you do? Greetings, Mr. Benny. I don't think we've ever met before. My name is Ripley. Oh, Bob Ripley, the Believe It or Not man. Huh? 
Well, well, it was awfully nice of you to drop in, Mr. Ripley. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, Jack, uh, you know I'm always on the lookout for curiosities of all kinds. Yes, yes, I... I never miss your program or your cartoons either. Uh, well, what's on your mind? Mr. Well, I would like to get a few angles on you and your work. As a curiosity. As... Oh, well, uh, go right ahead. Hmm? Now, first, is it true that when you make a picture, you wear a silver fox to pay? <laughs> yes, but only on special occasions. As a rule, I wear a subdued fright wig, like uh, J.C. Flippin. Uh, you know, something... <laughs> Now, another thing. Yeah? You're a musician, aren't you? Well, yes. Around Carnegie Hall, I'm known as Yasha. <laughs> Is it true that the strings on your violin were made from the tail of a wildcat who later committed suicide? <laughs> well, he didn't commit suicide exactly, but he is wilder than ever now, Bob. Uh, one more question, Jack. Uh -huh. I understand that you were recently chosen as one of the best, best men in America. Is that right? Yes, I cannot deny that. <laughs> well, is that suit you're wearing now a sample of your taste in clothes? Well, of course, uh, don't go by this, Bob. You see, this is just a, a little lounging outfit, you know? <laughs> oh, you mean you'd look better if you were lying down. He's an undertaker, I'll scream. And then... Now, really, it isn't fair to judge me by this suit, Bob. Really, Mr. Ripley, you'd love my soup and fish. <laughs> you cook, too. I was talking about my formal attire. Are there any more questions? No. Believe it or not, I think I've got about all I need. Thanks very much, Jack. You're welcome. Oh, would you like a picture of me, Mr. Ripley? No, not unless you've got three on. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, uh, Harry Ripley seems to be a... I mean, well, Harry, Ripley seems to be a nice <laughs> chap, um, although his questions were rather embarrassing. Now, what would I do? What would I do with three arms? Well, you could play your violin and hold your nose at the same time. <laughs> I could also punch you in the eye, Harry. Well, let's go on with the show. And now, folks, our conductor, Abraham Lyman, will play... Uh, what's it going to be, Abe? Here, it's written in this little book. Open it and read it. Why don't you read it yourself? If I could read, I'd get my own program. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Go ahead, open the book. Okay. Ouch, my finger. <laughs> I knew you'd fall for that mousetrap gag. Fine, I had to come to New York for that. Now, play your number and leave me alone. Okay. Now, hold it a minute. Come in. Well, well, how are you, old boy? Glad to see you. Say, you're a sight for sore eyes. Well, Believe I... me, it's like old times again. Yes, sir. Say, you put on a little weight, haven't you? Oh, a little, a little. You know, this is rather embarrassing, but I just can't seem to place you. Funny, I can't place you either. Goodbye. <laughs> Play, Phil, or A. Why don't I stay home where I belong? <laughs>
The nice new number you gave me for my New York appearance. <laughs> Hallelujah, played by Abe Lyman. I hate to admit it, Abe, but it sounded all right, though. Say, your orchestra's changed a little. I see some new faces in there. Huh? Yes, Jack, and I'd like to have you meet some of the boys. This is my first violinist, Monsieur the Mug. Oh, oh, hello, Monsieur. Hi, Toot. <laughs> nice boy. And, yes. Jack, this is my piano player, Machine Gun Stokowski. <laughs> my, what name? Say, Abe, who's that new saxophone player over there? You mean Butch? <laughs> yes, yes. I noticed he was scribbling on a piece of paper all during the last number. What was that for? Well, every month he has to write a letter to the parole board. <laughs> well, that's sweet of him to remember. <laughs> Harry, that's a nice bunch of boys Abe has here. Yes, they are, Jack. They all came in cabs, which they drove. Oh. <laughs> By the way, Jack, since yes. I'm taking Don Wilson's place here, is it all right if I say my little piece now? Oh, sure, Harry. I've been sort of waiting for that. Go right ahead. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for an economical dessert, be sure and go to your nearest grocer and ask for a package of, uh, of... Jell-O, for heaven's sake. Jell-O, for heaven's Three sake. Three years I've been... It, it comes in six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, cherry, and strawberry. <laughs> Look, what happened to lemon and lime? Oh, yes. yes. Lemon, lime, strawberry, raspberry, and cherry. Now orange has disappeared in there. Look at it. Just, just drop it. Let it go. Oh, no. Oh, no. So insist on genuine jello. Look for the big red letters on the orange. That's on the box! <laughs> Poor Don Wilson. I'll bet he collapsed in front of his radio. Oh, well, thanks anyway, Harry. You tried. Well, what do we do now, Jack? Well, Harry, if I was in Hollywood right now doing this program, just about this time, Mary would walk in and say... Uh... Hello, everybody. Hello. Why, Kay! <laughs> Kate Smith, you little lifesaver, you. You know, you couldn't have walked in at a more opportune time. Am I glad to see you? And I'm glad to see you, too, Jack. Are you having a good time in New York? Oh, wonderful. Really a swell. Kate, you know Harry Von Zell, don't you? Oh, sure. Hello, Harry. Glad to see you, Kate. And this is our temporary maestro, Abe Lyman. Yes, I've met Mr. Lyman before. Sure. Hello, Smitty. <laughs> hey. Don't mind him, Kate. He's a little on the rough side, mm, you know. Don't worry, Jack. We'll get along all right. Sit down, slat. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're taking it the right way I must tell you how much I've enjoyed your programs, Kate They've been grand Thank right? you, Jack And by the way, Mary told me that as soon as I saw you To give you her love and a great big kiss How about Phil Harris? There you go, just like the rest of No kidding, Kate Why do you, what, what do all you girls see in Phil? Well, he's handsome, charming, suave Debonair Debonair. Hey, where did you learn that word? Well, I was reading a book one day and stubbed my eye on it. I thought so. Well, anyway, Kate, how about that kiss Mary wanted me to give you? Now, come on. Come on. None of your lips, Benny. <laughs> All right, but you don't know what you're missing. You know, Kate, I'm a leading man in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll see you out there sometime. It's a date. You can always find me on Vine Street right in front of the Owl Drugstore there. Oh, say, I meant to tell you, Jack. Mary sent me a letter yesterday, and it was all about you. Do you want to hear it? Oh, no, don't bother, Kate. Oh, yes, I want to read it to you. Please let me. Don't no, you want no, to? It's probably oh, I nothing. Will. Well, I will anyhow. Don't all beg right, me. Now, I'll uh, read it. Fonzel, Here, get here on up, time Harry. next. Keep quiet, Jack. <laughs> it yeah. reads, Dear Kate, yeah. glad to hear that you're taking my place. But as this is the first time you've ever worked with Jack, there are some things that every girl should know. <laughs> It starts out bad. If Jack asks you out to dinner and tells you there's a marvelous floor show at the Automat, don't fall for it. Now, isn't that awful? However, if you do go out to a nightclub with Jack and he asks you to dance with him, say no. Hmm. As he'll want to roll up his pants and do the minuet. That's very comical. There. Give my love to all and I'll be sitting in front of my radio waiting for your song. Well, that's a sweet ending anyway. Well, I Kate, you are too. going to sing a number for us, aren't you? You bet I am. Would you like to hear this time it's real? Yes, sir. Abe, give Miss Smith a melodious background with feeling, harmony, and nice, smooth rhythm. You mean I should be debonair? Yes. And tell your guitar player to put his shoes on. <laughs> sing, Kate. Debonair yet. <laughs> I was 
a fool Knew nothing where love was concerned I'm through with all confusion For now I've learned I know it It's real, sung by Kate Smith, accompanied by Debonair and his orchestra. Kate, I must say that you sang just as good for Jello as you do for Calumet baking powder and Swan's Down cake flour. Well, yeah, I got them both in there, didn't sure I? Sure did. You know, Kate, I would like to reciprocate in some way. Isn't there anything I can do for you while I'm in town? Oh no, Jack. Thanks just the same. Well, you've been so sweet, though, Kate. Really, I insist. Uh... Well, all right. If it'll make you any happier, you can buy me a nice ermine wrap. Well, I'll do that. I will. And now, uh, hey, wait a minute. You mean real ermine? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, Jack. Well, Kate, I'd run right out and buy you one, except today is Sunday and every place is closed. I can get one of my boys open the store for you. <laughs> Quiet. Anyway, don't worry about it, Kate. I'll make up for this some way. Don't... Well, that's sweet, Jack. Pardon me. Hello? Hollywood calling? Yeah, this is Jack Benny. I'll take it. Hello? Oh, hello, Kenny. It's Kenny Baker. Well, Kenny, how are you, kid? What? No, no, she's not taking your place. Look, at Kate Smith is a star on her own program. What? Why doesn't she stay on it? Hmm. Now, Kenny. I'm sorry, Kate. Now, listen, Kenny, I don't want to discuss it with you any further. I'll see you when I get home. What? Yes, yes, I'll bring you one. Now, hang up. Goodbye. Hmm, what a kid. What does he want, Jack? The little copycat. He wants an ermine wrap, too. Oh. I hope what he said didn't offend you, Kate. No. I think he's one of the cutest little brats in the world. Yeah, he is. 
Listen, Jack, Man. I'd like to stay longer, but really, I must run long now. I want to say thanks very much for inviting me up here this Well, it's day. been an honest-to-goodness treat, and I'll never forget it, Kate. Good evening, Mr. Billy. Were you looking for me? Yes, Rochester, just a minute. Goodbye, Kate, and thanks again so much. So long, Jack. Good luck, and it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Well, Roch, I haven't seen you since we got off the train four days ago. Where were you? I've been weekending up in Harlem. We had a gin barbecue. Fine, I had to do all my own unpacking. What do you think I brought you along for? You didn't say. You're supposed to be working for me and you spend all your time in Harlem. I suppose you went to all the hot spots. There ain't no cool ones there. <laughs> Never mind. Now, look, Rochester, go right over to the Waldorf Astoria and straighten up my suite. Did you move from the YMCA? Rochester! I just went there for a swim. Now, run along. Okay. Uh, uh, boss? Yeah. I'm having a little, uh, financial recession. Uh-huh. I see. I wonder if I could have an advance on my salary. Look, I already gave you an advance. I want something in advance of that. <laughs> Oh, all right. Here's five dollars. Uh, could you, uh, could you elevate that to eight fifty? Eight fifty? What for? I promised to buy my gal a sun lamp. <laughs> all right, here you are. Now, don't forget, Rochester. Don't forget, we're leaving Tuesday, so be sure and be up at the hotel. And come in. Well, look who's here. Come on in, Fred. Thank All you. I need. Uh, <laughs> me and two ass friends. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm certainly surprised to see so many of you in here tonight. It's uh, not raining outside, is it? <laughs> No, it's not raining, Fred. These people are all here to see me. And uh, you're not giving away dishes or anything, Mr. Benny? No, sir, it's just me. Now, look, Jack, you couldn't draw a crowd as big as this if you were a gutter on New Year's Eve. <laughs> oh, I couldn't, eh? With running water, I'll throw that in. <laughs> now, listen, Fred. You're here to work, so take off your coat and let's go. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Before we start this Punch and Benny show, there's something we've got to straighten out right now. What's that, Fred? I'm not going to open my mouth on this program except to yawn until you give me what you promised me last week. What I promised you? You know, now don't play possum, Benny. <laughs> Hand over that Boy Scout knife. <laughs> Oh, yes. I knew you'd remember that. All right, here it is. Wait till I take the chain off. I want the knife, chain, and everything that goes with it. Oh, I suppose you even want this elk's tooth. No, you can put that back in your mouth. <laughs> well, here's the knife, Fred. Take it and consider our deal closed. Now, wait a minute. You're not rushing me into this thing. Let me see if this knife's in good condition. There's the big blade. Yeah. There's the corkscrew, the fingernail file. There's the ping-pong paddle. <laughs> Bottle of... Hey, what's this thing here? That's a folding bed. Are you satisfied? <laughs> well, I guess it's all right. But, well, Jack, my mood changes here. Yes, I know. <laughs> Coming in the mood now. Mm -hmm. have, you, uh, have you been having a good time in New York? Do you, have you seen any of the shows or anything? Yes, Fred, I saw the Ed Wynn show. That was swell. I saw George M. Cohen show. That was grand. And then I saw your picture. My mood changes here. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> there wasn't an S on that well by any chance. Well, what about it? Nothing, Fred. Fred. Oh, wait. But if you got paid for that picture, and I think you did, you should split 50-50 with Santa Claus. First time I ever saw a radio comedian who was his own studio audience. <laughs> Listen, Jack, if you're, ref <laughs> if you're a fine time I go on, the first show I didn't get on at all. Now, here's the second one. I'm just creeping in at the finish. <laughs> Listen, Jack, what? if you're referring to my, that screen triumph, Sally, Irene, and Alan, yeah. that picture is funnier than Don Wilson thinks you are. Is that so? You're jealous, that's, that's all. Is so? Did you ever hear yourself enjoy you? Oh. Well, jealous. Why well, I made a picture last year called Artists and Models. It was a sensation. I got 85 belly laughs. I'll say you did. You should have pulled in your stomach, too. 
My stomach had nothing to do with it. It was my performance. At least I photographed well. Oh, I suppose I didn't. Listen, Fred, I saw a sweepstake winner in a newsreel yesterday that looked better than you did. <laughs> and he was selling fish at the time. Well, you put me in a picture with a fish and I'll steal a picture too. <laughs> Artists and models. What were you in that celluloid omelet? An artist or a model? I was an easel, Smarty. An easel? Yes. Well, how can a weasel play an easel? <laughs> now, listen, Fred. Let's... Shall I slice him down, Mr. Benny? Never mind, Rochester. Now, wait a minute. Who is this Swami here? <laughs> Swami? I'm Mr. Benny's butler. Butler, hey? Well, listen to me, you nougatine jeeves. One more to word out of you, and you'll be buttling in a shroud. Don't let him scare you, Rochester. Uh, I ain't scared. That's the stuff. Wait a minute. What is a shroud? A shroud, my untutored friend, is a windbreaker for a ghost. Oh, I'll make way for a cow. <laughs> Rochester, you see, Fred and I'll probably have to get a new butler. Well, hello there, Fred. Well, Harry Farnsell, what are you doing in the enemy's uh, camp here? Well, I came here to help Jack out tonight. He needed an announcer. Oh, is he going to pay you? Certainly not. He's doing it as a favor. Of course, I will buy him a necktie or something. What do you mean, something? Something cheaper and shut up. <laughs> I thought so. Benny, you're so tight. You've not only got the first dollar you ever earned, you've got the guy's right arm who handed it to you. Well, it was loose. Well, let me tell you something, Alan. Hey, pipe down, fellas. You're upsetting me. Oh, are we bothering you, Abe? Yeah, why don't you two guys be debonair? Abe, if you say debonair once more, I'm going to ask you what it means. Well, how will you know if his answer's correct? <laughs> Don't worry about me. I know plenty of big words. Look, I've got words I could cut in halves and you wouldn't understand either half of them. That's right. Now, look, you... Look, you itinerant buffoon, the only big word you know is your right name. Well, if I did reduce it a little, my right name wasn't so long. It wasn't. Why, your name was so long it used to take 15 minutes to write it in shorthand. Hmm. And then they had to send the pencil over to the Mayo Brothers for relaxation. You should talk. When you were in vaudeville, they had to put your right name on a rubber marquee. Now, that's vulcanized slander, Benny. Why, you weather-beaten gargoyle... Hold on there, Mr. B. I'll throw you out of here so fast, you look like a jockey on a skyrocket. Now, that's enough, Benny. One more crack, and I'll hit you on top of your head so hard, you'll think your feet are bookends for your, for your head. <laughs> I'm glad you loused that one up. <laughs> Taking my Boy Scout knife and getting out of here. Oh, that's fine. Thanks for coming over, you town hall Buddha. You're welcome, you war he can walk you. <laughs> so I'm nice enough to invite him up here, and what do I get? Hey, Jack. What is it, Abe? Here's your knife back. My knife? How'd you get it away from Alan? My flute player bumped into him. Oh, boy, that's marvelous. Thanks. You want his watch, too? Never mind. Play, eh? You know, the crowning touch to a good meal is the dessert, the happy ending. Well, that's where Jell-O comes in, the happy ending for any meal. For Jell-O looks so festive and tastes so delicious, it makes the ideal dessert for any occasion. And Jell-O is quick and easy to prepare. Serve it perfectly plain, if you like, a clear, glowing mold of Jell-O, or garnish it with whipped cream, fruit, or nut meats. It's grand no matter how you serve it. But remember, only Jell-O brings you that delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. So don't accept any substitutes. Get the real thing, the one and only genuine Jell-O. The last number of the 26th program in the new Jell-O series. We're with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood, California. I want to thank Harry Von Zell, Bob Ripley, Kate Smith, Abe Lyman, and Fred Allen for their cooperation. It was a grand gesture. And now, folks, come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Is the program over yet? Just about. Say, how did you get to New York, anyhow? I flew in. I hope I land pretty soon. Oh, good night, doll. <laughs> this is the National Broadcasting Company. You're listening to...